there that Prime was also sort of filling up a lot of its slots with some sort of ad-supported content, and of course now Netflix moving that direction. We're in a cycle that is somewhat challenging for the advertisers. So is there enough content uh, from the advertising side to, to actually make money on the back of this? Well, brand advertising is a huge multi-billion dollar market. So in theory, there should be enough money to go around. But the problem is we have very successful incumbents. Traditional linear TV companies are unlikely to cede much market share if they can help it to, to, the, to the new challenges like Netflix. So it remains to be seen. And I think that's one of the reasons why the market was a little bit iffy initially last night because we're now pushing all this back into H223. We wanted to see a bit more data right now. We haven't got it at the moment. Just on subscriber numbers, what, what clarity do we have here on the sus subscriber figures and the evidence that paying subscriber numbers are growing at the appropriate rate for their targets? A year ago, this company lost subs. 200,000? Correct. The stock tanked and the stock had a very poor 2022. The recovery started back end of last year and into this year and in Q1 this year, they have grown that subscriber base. They are still monetizing North America much more efficiently, much more effectively than any other reason and they are guiding to some subs growth in Q2. The numbers aren't great, we're not back in hyper growth mode, but we are growing again. Who's going to be the losers in this sector? I mean. You, you mentioned well, on air and off air. We've mentioned a few. I mean, Karen's mentioned it, the NBC offering Peacock, obviously Netflix, Prime, Apple, um, Disney Plus. You know, are they all going to make it? The conventional um, rule of thumb is that the average household will take three, three right. services, three paid for services, and that's including Spotify as well, is it or not? That excludes that's Spotify. That's okay. focused purely on, on on what we might call Just, TV, okay, yeah. visual content. Um, but we are in a cost of living crisis and people are watching the pennies. So people's willingness to take above inflation increases in what they're paying for should be called into question. I would say the jury's probably still out on where we, where we end up. If I had to place a bet, I would say Netflix and Prime went out mm -hmm. and then there's a gap for who comes in third. Uh, in, in terms of, though, um, the profitability per customer, because we've talked also off air about the extraordinary amount of money that Netflix and others are throwing at a vast amount of inventory and production as well. So you've got your increase in costs on your production side, which is another side of the cost of living crisis. That making films ain't getting any cheaper if you're making quality films and series as well. Plus the vicious price war and, again, you know, different pricing models that you and Karen were discussing as well. Is the acquisition cost per customer and the retention cost per customer, is that going to continue to be squeezed? I think it probably is. Um, we should point out to the viewers that Netflix are committed to spending $17 billion per annum on new content. Mm -hmm. That's a figure that they can justify because this is all that they do. But the other companies that we're talking about often have multiple calls on capital, so they cannot sometimes afford to commit that much capital to new inventory.